Okay, this video I want to talk about three individual optimizations that have been made recently to Wraith Binder's Voxel Engine. Well, overall engine and Voxel Engine. Um, we can, we have it. The reason I did this is I started to notice that it was getting really slow, especially when I was recording videos, especially when rotating the camera. But also, just in general, I was like, man, why is it just kind of slowing down every once in a while? Definitely, that's the sign that you need some optimization, right? Um, frame rate dropping below 60, signs like that. So here's uh, here's what I was able to accomplish in the last few days, optimizations-wise. Um, it always starts with instruments, measuring your performance, you know, measuring what the heck's going on, where your app is spending its time. Um, I'll start with the overall. Overall, Wraithbinder, over a 10-second period, this is a 10-second slice of time I've selected up here. Over a 10 second period, Wraithbinder before all these optimizations was using about 7.7. .7, and this is the game sort of at rest. Nothing's really going on. The player is just sitting in one place. The camera's not moving. However, the AI is moving. It's moving around and doing stuff. So um, the, biggest, the biggest performance improvement came from this. Um, this is not even in Wraithbinder's code. This is actually Coco's 2D's section of... Uh, this thread and it's when it rendered the scene and what what uh what it's doing when it's rendering the scene is it's visiting every single node and then um calculating its matrix um based on its its um translation it's a uh, projection and view matrix uh combined with its parents matrix etc etc so that can get quite time consuming right to go and visit every single node calculate its matrix update its whatever the heck else it's doing when it's visiting nodes, right? Um, so the solution here was, um, see, I have something like 4,000 different um, sprites in a cache ready to go. So things like um, the Fog of War is just a ton of, like, hundreds of sprites, basically, that are uh, circle gradient sprites and sometimes foggy sprites. See that the, the, the Fog of War around here is all just a bunch of sprites that are cached. Um, here we can show, when I turn this on, it shows zero unimportant and 760-ish important. Those are my um, cached sprites. The fog is considered important because um, it will actually go and make changes to its cached sprite. So it can't just go, the cache system can't just go and it just uh, release that sprite if it wants to. Unimportant sprites like, for example, the sparks that are coming off the wall here, and if I jump in the air and or cause any little dust on the ground, things like that. Those are little tiny little sprites that are unimportant, and they could just be um, reused without notice at any point. We could just go delete that sprite and use it for something else. However, the fog, um, fog of war, and also the fog below the the floating. Um, uh, island that we're on right now that's also important but anyways um so those sprites right are every single one of those used to be a node that had to be visited by coco sudi every single every single time we update um this is every single time we ever get an animation ticker or, or a basically the chance to run any code at all it had to do that and that was using 1.7 seconds to do that on average every single update right 1.7 seconds out well sorry 1.7 seconds out of the 10 seconds total that we've selected up here right so that was huge so now we're only using 700 milliseconds so we've, we've shaved off an entire second out of 10 seconds there that's really really nice improvement here and all it is is using a sprite batch node and um, a sprite batch node is basically when you take one texture, here's the texture we have for all the common sprites in Wraithbinder currently, and I combine them. So I used to have two or three different textures. I was like, man, Wraithbinder barely uses any 2D sprites, so let's just put them all in one. And we've noticed that we, we're only using a 1024 by 1024 single texture. Um, so it's really easy for us to do a sprite batch node for every single sprite in the whole game. Um, so the sprite batch node basically is a single parent that um, that is responsible for tons of different, uh, you know, thousands of different sprites underneath it, and it can update them all faster, and it also puts them all into one single OpenGL draw call. So we're getting performance boosts beyond just what we're seeing right here. This is just in the CPU. We're also getting um, 
uh, GPU performance improvements as well because we're not calling as many uh, draw calls. So all it is is just a node in Cocos 2D that's initialized with a certain texture and everything on that's a child of that has to also use that same texture. So hence the fact that we consolidated everything into one texture right here. So very simple, adds to itself to the parent. And then the sprite cache, uh, when it goes and gets a sprite, it can, wait, where does it actually go to the cat? I thought it was here. Oh, sorry, this is in Sprite Create. Sprite Create is this method that's sort of like a convenience method that um, will sometimes go and create a brand new Sprite, or sometimes it will just create a Sprite from the Sprite cache. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this can smartly use the cache um, if it knows that its parent is one of, the, one of those nodes that will basically be um, uh, usable by this Sprite Batch node. So pretty simple. It's just basically creating sprites underneath that sprite batch node. And there's some other stuff that the render system has to do to go and um, update itself uh, every time you know the camera rotates or the camera moves. We also have to go and update those batch nodes as well as the camera node. So that's a really huge performance gain right there. One whole second out of 10 gained. And then we've no, we noticed we've also done some other stuff because this used to be using about eight seconds and we're down to only five. This is really good. So two other performance improvements. One was pretty significant, was actually really simple to implement. Um, it just casts less shadows. Casting shadows is one of the most expensive things and I think we can show that here. Yeah, Tick Animate used to be using, so this is once again, the game's just sort of at rest. Tick Animate, used to be using about 3.5 seconds now it's using 1.5 tick tick is also is about at the same level it was i got some improvements i could make here but they're not as low hanging fruit but the tick animate thing that's low hanging fruit was calling um paint transparent voxels now wow look at that paint transparent voxels over whole 10 seconds is only using 100 milliseconds what that's doing here it's casting shadows this is a pretty expensive operation it goes and prepares a shadow cast has to actually cast a ray through 3d space and hit stuff um, to create the shadows in the way that we're that we're implementing it here in, in wraith binder to get this certain sort of hard pixelated look uh, so anyways this is a huge performance improvement and all it is is just bailing on um, casting shadows for everything but the first light so we've got, where is that? Oh, if the count is greater than or equal to max shadow cast. This is like a two line uh, optimization right here. Anyways, this is a value set to like one or two. So basically it, it will only cast a shadow for one light at a time right now. I could set that to two lights. Before though, we it was unlimited. It would cast shadows for up to like eight, 16 lights, whatever the heck, however many lights were currently around the player. And in fact, right here in this opening scene right here, we've got one light being cast by this home lantern, another light here by this home lantern, another light there by this one, another light from the player, and another light from the sky bot. That's like five lights right here. And uh, I think three out of the, those five will cast shadows. So that was a really, really expensive thing. So now we're just casting one shadow and it's actually just way more efficient. Besides, these shadows that were being cast by these 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 ones on they're sort of uh, secondary here, um, they were really light anyways you could barely see them so it really didn't uh and it looked bad if you put put them any darker so it's an easy win so that's a really really huge performance improvement um and i think i'll probably leave it there only casting one shadow or per light or yeah one whatever and uh the other oh the other Im improvement here that's really noteworthy is um rotation so i'm going to select a different chunk of this whole uh profile I did earlier and this is basically just me holding down the rotate button the entire time you can see it's using a ton of time because rotating the camera is quite an expensive operation uh, but let's see that in action what I was actually doing there I was basically just sitting here in the game and holding down the rotate button right and this is what it looks like 
And it looks like while I'm streaming, or while I'm recording this video, you know, I'm, I'm in the mid-20s frames per second. This used to be dropping down to hold like five frames a second. It was horrible. So this is a quite an improvement. And in fact, when I'm not recording videos, that's above 30 the whole time. So I basically have achieved over 30 frames per second while rotating the camera for the first time in this entire game's history. Um, and let's look at how that was actually accomplished. This was, um, let's go to the, the time profile again. Uh, so we've selected that 10 seconds of time. Oh, this gets all wonky. Let's get this all. Scene render is ticking even less than it was before there. Um, it was tick tick actually. It was using tons of time when it was calling the render system ticks, tick camera rotation, and set camera rotation. Those were using a lot more because what set camera rotation used to have to do, so this was this is using about one second out of 10 seconds when we're just holding down the rotate button. And before, this was using nearly three seconds. And uh, so again, once again, this is like a two second savings out of 10, which is really, really significant. And it's all because it used to, every time it set the camera rotation, it used to have to reset the entire render grid. So it would change the camera's rotation, reset any projection matrix matrices, uh, determine the camera extents, set the current render offset, um, and then set the new camera position. And then there's some other stuff it does now where uh, it only does this in a dry run say, since it goes and updates its movement vectors, erases all voxels, and updates any two-dimensional nodes. But before there was basically this right here, reset um, render grid, which is a really expensive thing. Basically, let's look at reset render grid. Um, this has to go and clear the entire render grid, which is not, which is actually a little bit time consuming itself. But then it goes and loops over every single render component and has to refresh all of their models because it needs to know the, the new models. Because the camera has rotated, we need to have refreshed the model so we can determine the current extents of that, the two-dimensional extents of that model. So in two-dimensional space, how far is its upper left and how far is its lower, or its upper right and its lower left. So then those are those determine where it's at in the render systems. This the render system grid is a two-dimensional grid, which helps me look up really quickly where in uh, where what entities are at a certain two-dimensional position. And that's that's uh really necessary in the game. It uses this all the time for lots of its different effects and stuff like that. So this has to be done every time the uh the camera rotation changes, right? Not really. There's, so this is the, the big optimization here is that we really only need to change the camera to refresh the render grid once right so we can re so now what happens is um let's slow down time a little bit we'll rotate the camera basically it only has to change the render grid when it starts the rotation and change it to where it's going to be at at the destination rotation so the two-dimensional render grid is actually off in this current implementation it's actually a little bit inaccurate while it's rotating right there so there's some entities that are going to be on the screen that um that are just not that are that might not be rendered or whatever but it, in in practice this the, the whole system works out pretty well so it looks good uh, especially because there's fog of war going on here it kind of um prevents any any of its um in fact i think i see that there is an issue right there see how over here we're missing some voxels shoot actually this is pretty bad I may have actually messed that up more than I thought. I know, ah, yep, I got some work to do here. But anyways, the point is that um, that it, you, we only have to update the render grid once at the start of the rotation. And that saves a whole second and a half off of the time out of 10 seconds when rotating the camera. So there you go. There's three different optimizations made to Wraithbinder's Voxel Engine in the past few days and i um, sharing kind of how it was programmed. So thanks for watching this video. We'll catch you next time.